Hello, my kako. Okay. I don't know how I'm supposed to stand over here, but maybe I address this crowd over there. Everybody stay busy working. Before I start, maybe I give some inspiration on the things that is being done here. You know, in, in that celebration of La Hoi Hoi Air. So, I'm going to start with some things that is occurring down on the Kihei side on this place called Kulani Hakoi. And there's some issues that a lot of the communities from that Moku is going through right now. But what the kahe is about is about um, when this tree is for, uh, grows, then you get all the seeds and the flower, then the seed falls, then you get more pula pula grow. And it talks about kulani hakoi, how the heaven slice into the earth and make the divisions of water where the water is supposed to go for cultivation purposes for our kanaka. That's always been an inspiration for me when we first went home. But uh, Mo'olelo never come to me, not until years after. And a lot of the halals and hui's out there, they use this too because it's, it's about finding inspiration and finding that venue to set a course on what we need to do and, what we need, and where we need to go is Kanaka. So, E ke akua nui akua iki akua poko akua loa e vehi kalani vehia kau hola kalani kau hola ia va vahi kalani va vahi e kulani ha ku i kau mai la e luna e hu kau a mai la ua a kupu mai la kupu a mu o mai la mu o a liko mai la liko a lau mai la lau a la la mai la 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 a kumu mai la kumu a kumu pa a hina ole e ho ulu mai e ho ulu mai a ulu mai la e a he leo vale no hui aloha mai kaku o kea moku kapu koe no na ka ula mai o ya mai la hina mai um I'm from this one, once upon a time, quiet little valley known as Kaula in the capital of the kingdom of Lahaina. I st still today consider that place as the capital of the kingdom. So in ce celebration of La Hoi Hoi Ea, it's continual for me. I never forgot about our past. I never forgot about our fiduciary duties on how we kanaka today and need to apply those values of the past into today. And it's been kind of horrendous for myself as well as my family. I know a lot of you previously have heard throughout the news in the state of Hawaii that this one kanaka kind of beat the system in this quite of action against one of the biggest conglomerates on the west side, the West Maui Land Company, that I was victorious in 15 years of litigation in a quiet title through a jury trial. The decision was granted to me on my genealogical track. I figure I, I take everybody, I rewind 20 years from today all the way back from where everything started. I think that in hopes that it would give other families inspiration because I know we're all seeking for the same. I know that, you know, in our life today, which is a pathetic life, that we got to li live that dual citizenship as Kanaka and how we need to uh, abide by the existing laws today, but then at the same time, there are, there are other laws that protect us out there. And hopefully that I can bring some clarity to giving everybody uh, pieces of a puzzle in hope that you start to pursue your air, your vision, your connection to your family, because those lands out there are waiting for you. And it's really simple. 20 years ago, I was living in Nanakuli, where I met this one brother. He's sitting here today, which is good, which is uh, Eric Enos. Mahalo, Eric, for coming. All the way from Oahu, from YNI. And being in a place that I wasn't rooted, but I know I had a lot of uncles and aunties, back in 1994, 
My dad had these kind of visions when he started getting older and he said that we got to go home. And every night, you know, there's periodically we used to visit my father. I was living in Anakuli, so every Saturday we had to make it a must to go see daddy. And father was getting all his moe ahs saying that get this wahini. They're coming to his, into his dreams saying that we got to come home. So it was getting kind of crazy with my father every night after night after night. Then my dad, he's on, he's, he like suck him up, yeah. So me, the optimistical son, I'm the youngest out of seven in my family. I'm the one, the real arrogant one saying, Dad, you must be drinking too much. You need to slow down. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the case. So my father said we had to go home. Knowing that my father's route was in Lahaina, one of the hippos of that area. My dad got exiled from Maui back in 1947. Literally taken as a child of 14 years, yeah, by the authorities of that town, was taken out. He said, you need to go. So my father left Kaula Valley and he was exiled by the laws of that town which was in collaboration with Pioneer Mill, took my father, put him on one boat, sent him to Lanai. And he was living with the Aikala family in Lanai, Auntie Grace, Uncle Martin, Aikala. He was raised with them. My dad went to the Marines at 17 years old, underage, yeah. But he went to the Marines, he was stationed at Kwajalein. He went. that was about the time, the Korean War. And, now let me kind of forward it to where all our heavy repercussions started to happen. <coughs> that one day my father said we need to go home. And understanding all that pillar care that went happened to him back then, we needed to the his kids needed to find closure for him because there was a lot of missing elements that went happened to my dad. So my father was getting these dreams of this wahini looking out the window, telling him, you got to come home, you got to come home. So we all decided that one day, you know what, we're going to make the move. So it was my brother Kalani Kapu, my sister Kwailani White, she lives in Papagolea, and myself. Then when we went to Lahaina, my father took us on this, this huakai. From Lahaina school, we went all the way up into the mountains. And he started explaining certain areas. This is where Kanawale Valley used to live. Old man Kanawale Valley. Yeah, he used to live under this old mango tree. And we went to this place and the house was still there. It was overgrown over this mango tree up in, uh, right below Pau Pau. Then we made the trek around the valley into Kaula Valley where my dad was raised. The first sign for us was when my father said, I come back. And the, the place is obliterated. There's, there's nothing there. No more houses. Had a lot of the existing tarot patches, but everything was covered up. My father goes in there for about half hour. He comes out and he goes, he brings out this big boy pounder. And we we're all amazed that, you know, for 50 something years, my father never went home. Then all of a sudden he goes in the bushes. He brings out his boy pounder when he was a youth and he says, was still there. So that gave us even more inspiration saying, wow, maybe this is our Pico. Then he said that we needed to find someplace else. It's like my father took us on the footsteps of his past. And he kind of left us there. So there was this one, this holly that was built on a property. And a lot of the Japanese used to malama that holly. Inside the house was, uh, they call them like one, one prayer stone, which was an image of one wahine and was dressed in white. So a lot of the Japanese from the mill time, they were up in this valley and they lived harmoniously with my ohana. So, my father started to get frustrated, so I told him, Dad, wait, you know what, I come back. So I went inside, up alongside the pump house and found this holly with this pohaku dressed 
you know, a white sheet around them, and I kind of went freeze, and you know how some can get it, like not very overexcited to the point where I like run out of there because now I see my father's visions of what he saw, then everything after that was like I started eating my words, t apologizing to my dad about him being too drunk. He would never know what he was talking about. But that kind of went slap us, saying that, okay, you know what, finally we're home. And from that time on, litigation started to come. What I did was, the first thing we went to Pioneer Mill and told them, I want the key for you guys' gate. So, and the reasons why is because my father said we had to go home and Malama. And it wasn't necessarily the taro patches. In the valley where I live, there's over 2,000 taro patches. But it was the barrels of our kupuna that was in that valley. My father said that was our responsibility. So we went home for Malama, our, our cemeteries, our palina. And th this was before West Maui Land Company we had purchased 5,000 acres for $15 million from Pioneer Mill with a warranty title deed. So from 1999, when they acquired these properties to Pioneer Mill with a warranty title deed, the first quiet title that they went put out, I went challenged them. I've been in litigation for over 20 years. There was eight quiet title cases I've been involved in. And I get two more pending one going to the Supreme Court. But I think the whole message here is there was a vision why we went home. There was a Moi A or a Hawaii Lona that was given to my father. My father transferred his mana on to us. And me as the youngest, I get stuck with everything. And the, the message I'm trying to put out to everybody is you gotta pursue you got to be consistent in everything that you do and trying to find out where is your place in this society. We all talk about la ho'i ho'i ea, yeah? We all talk about the sovereign movement. But we, we, we flustered with the fact that, you know, we got to live the multiple life because we, we get conditions in the life that we live today versus trying to find just our basic self our commonalities within what we do. So my strive was, for the past 20 years, was full-blown litigation. And not very, very many people knew that I was, you know, this one Kanaka with his family in the valley being forced upon by evictions, multiple quiet title action suits against myself, um, preliminary injunctions trying to turn me into a criminal, uh, diverting the river water from the dam back into the river kind of thing. I went to court in front of Shackley Raffetto and he was like, Why, where were you diverting the water? I was like, back to the river. Why well, is anybody depending on that water coming to the diversion? Eh, the river gotta survive too. So that was the first uh, injunction that was against me, which when forced them to place on TRO on me so I know block, block or obstruct the road. Once that one year went by, I moved my car across the road and I blocked the road again. So I ended up in court and Shackley Federal says, okay, preliminary injunction granted, TRO granted, Mr. Kapu, no more. But then at the same time, the judge says, but no more bulldozers in the valley. So I stood up, I said, yeehaw, and everybody's like, why are you celebrating? They were just an injunction you and they just gave you a TRO. Yeah, but I would shut off the valley. No more work in that valley with bulldozers. Small victory, but for us, we're already determining our faith on what's going to happen in that valley. So conditions was set where we sat on the table and tried to mediate a lot of times. We had captains of the police department. We had DLNO. We had state agencies there. We had their attorney and my attorney sitting at the table. It went mediation, kind of settlement agreement. And this was like... 15 years ago. And I sat there with my attorney and I said, the only one making money is the guy the one you paying for this litigation. And I told one of the landowners that, hey, we can solve all this right now. Me and you in the ring, winner take all. 
Then all the police officers and everybody, they started laughing. And I said, whoa, you guys think this is funny? I'm serious because you're talking about my life. From that time on, litigation came one after another. One after another. To a point as to where they were trying to genocide me for my whole existence from the time we came home originally. And they were new some families too. To kind of claim that I wasn't the individual or the person, yeah, that was legitimate enough to be, even be on those lands. So I fought them. I fought them through thick and thin because it was about my identity that was at stake. And by all these litigations that have, have occurred, I never told anybody because I figured, you know what, there's not anybody really care about but mine. Me and my wife over there, babe, stand up. Uh, she was literally my backbone. Because uh, we always knew one partner when we start going into war, yeah? So she was my advisor. She was the one who says, okay, you know what? No, take the spear, take the pahoa. And it's been continual, continual, getting nailed, getting blasted from all different ways. But then I found remedy off of how we can deal with those things. And hopefully that throughout this discussion, I can give you guys some tools on how you guys can pursue your endeavors or your efforts to, to going home. In that litigation, it was all about your direct genealogy to the land commission award that was awarded during the time of the Mahele. So it's all about discovering who you are. You know, people say you gotta do your genealogy. Yeah, you gotta do your genealogy. But how are you gonna put your papers together to find the direct track all the way to the Mahele? It's really simple. And right now we get some families, which is the core Ohana that uh, we meet periodically every Thursday, yeah, to help other families out there throughout the state of Hawaii and putting their truth affidavits together. And that's the Keahi family, Malini, Auntie Bernie over there sitting down, Linda Nahina, they're from Olawalu. That's my core. So we all come together on Thursday and we, we, we give everybody the tools on how you guys can actually go home. And it's a direct descendancy. How many of you are going through litigation right now? Anybody? I don't get plenty. I don't get plenty Hawaiians. How many of you actually thought of your genealogy and how you tie to certain specific areas in Maui? How many of you get that one question? Yeah? On how all those big conglomerates all of a sudden came in and now they're on your land commission award and they, be, they are now calling themselves the owners of your property. Plenty of us, yeah? Same like us when we first went home. We knew that was our land. We never know how Pioneer Mills name got on our property. So we started doing the work. We started finding out a lot of things. And you know, the most scariest thing for families is when they start finding skeletons in the closet. Uh, Everybody heard that term before, skeletons in the closet. People are scared of that thought only because religion, yeah, was the biggest war for all of us. It depends on what church, but that's always been the complicated vision for all of us to finding the truth, was hoping to find skeletons in the closet. But those skeletons have a lot to do with maybe one kupuna from back then when kind of signed one palapala and all of a sudden was transferred to the mill companies. Then, you know, a lot of families, they get confused when they see those kind of things, saying that one kupuna was signed his interest over. But we all got to understand when the mahele was put together, it's through interstate succession of blood, yeah? which means there's an undivided interest. If that kupuna had brothers and sisters, then he had no right signing that property over. There's an undivided interest in there that everybody still can stake a claim to. 
our generations today now we're getting a little bit more akamai and how we're going to deal with these things so there was things that went happening in the past the pili care that came up upon us when we first went home and the consistency of staying the course and what we needed to do and how we're going to put our pala pala together so we can find air so we can find that that mechanism on how we're going to deal with our pathetic way of life, which is our colonized life, versus our, our vakahiko life, which is a reality. This is real now. This is not something that all of a sudden we put the staff in the water and we import, you know, you know, like how Moses did. It's a reality. We all got to make the effort to figure out where we stand as Kanaka Maoli, yeah? This is a great opportunity and how we can bring everybody together. And how we can bring life to Halo Anakalao Kapalili. But how many, we can, how many of these places that we can provide the abundance that we need so we can stay the course? Right now, today, we get the Kalepa family with a lot of the Ohana from Lahaina, the St. Kahoma Valley, and they're opening up Ontario Patch today. And, you know, it's a great move. Every low ikalo that we open up, we free the waters. There's conditions that a lot of people kind of need to understand. So in my, a lot of the research we did, we, I found this one old law was kumuli ili'i versus hona. Anybody heard that before? Kumuli ili'i versus hona. Well, kumuli ili'i was this kupuna from Lahaina when challenged the system back in 1897, it was a Supreme Court ruling that the taro farmers had first press precedence to the water. All of a sudden, in 1980, that rule and switch with Pioneer Mill was the sole proprietor in defining where that water was going. So I threw that in one of the land commissions when we filed a declaratory ruling against West Maui Land Company uh, when they were developing Laoni Opoko. I got stuck in a land use for two years and I threw that pala pala inside there. Oh, the state saw that. They, they said, well, this has nothing to do with water. We're a land committee. We're now a water committee. But what I wanted to do was bring rise to that, the fact that we had kupuna that was set precedence long time ago in 1897. How come our families no more water today? So when we started opening up all our Lo'i Kalo, I never asked for the water, I took the water. I couldn't get it from the old system, so I took them from the pump house. And I would take one pipe, I took three pipes. I took one three quarter pipe, I took one inch and a half pipe, I took one three inch pipe, yeah, I took them. Everybody remember in 2008, had a big fire down in the region, Lahaina, and we burned like over a thousand acres. This was instigated by West Maui Land Company. They tried to burn us out, okay? These kinds of things are a reality. I mean, when you start searching for yourself, you need to understand there will be heavy precautions that may come your way. But if we go in, join together, and understand the reasons why we're going home, it's easier for all of us to get there together. Yeah, I went single myself, so I placed myself as, as a lehua or as an example in hopes that, you know, me and my wife, we dedicated these things. My family, they're all still in Oahu. They still live there. I get some brothers live here. But um, they never have the thrive. So I took on the whole grant of this kuleana and said, you know what, I'm going to go all the way no matter what it takes. Even I'm going to lay my life on the line for that. And I had laid my life on the line many times to get where I am today. Just to show and let everybody know there is a possibility. If you get Kuliana out there, I can give you the road map. And it's very simple on how you guys can go home. Starting with your truth affidavit. When you say, I am that so-called person, yeah, there's simple steps that you need to do to get there. Once you notarize those papers, that truth affidavit, you make your signs, you place them on a property, and you go home. That's simple. Don't even ask permission. And I wouldn't say this by jeopardizing everybody that you guys might get in trouble. Yeah? 
if I never know that that is the route that you need to go, because I'm a prime example throughout all these years on the accomplishments that would happen just by following that same course. Year after year, we always used to kind of figure out whether or not this is the route we got to go. I had many sovereignty organizations coming to me telling me, this is the route you got to go, brother. Yeah? Sign up for us. We take care of you. All the organizations out there, you get Akahi, you get Henry, you get Bumpy, you get um, Dane Aipolani from Kauai. You get plenty out there. You get Silver from Big Island. Everybody came into my door and said, this is the route we got to follow. I say that, you know what, there's an old saying from Molokai, Hoali Kanakale Popopolo. And Hoali Kanakale Popopolo means that the chiefs are no longer here to govern us, that the people should rise like a great wave and cover the land. I say that many times because I believe in it. Our, there is three, I would say, solutions to absolute. One is the kingdom, fractured, taken over, dismantled, yeah? That's absolute. That's what Henry, Bumpy, Akahi, that's what they're going for. They're starting from the crown. Second, we get the Konohikis. Who knows? We may have some heirs of Konohikis right here. But they go with the government. They're dysfunctional. They were torn apart. They were separated. Third is the Makainana. Judah Land Commission Award of the Makainana. That's what a solution is. The government got to start from the bottom, not from the top. Because when it starts from the top, everything has been so dismantled. Yeah? That now we get the state of Hawaii claiming that they are responsible of the wards and constituents of the states, which is all of us. So they playing the part as being that so-called fiduciary responsibilities for all of Kanaka. No more Konohikis. Now we get DLNR, yeah, who's supposed to be the overseer for everything that we do in our Vaukua, Vaukele, our Vaukanaka. The people is the one that has to rise up. And I can show you simple examples and what you need to do by putting your simple palapala pala together, by bringing or breathing life into the name of your kupuna. Real simple. So the government got to start from the bottom, from the makainana, because once you go home, and once you start doing the things that you need to do to survive in this pathetic life that we're surviving in, you know, the biggest fear for a lot of people is, if we're going to okay all this, where is this going to come from? Where is that going to come from? How are we going to survive on our own knowing that, you know, the word sovereignty, some people see it as a good thing, but I tell you what, 90% of the people out there are saying that, you know what, it's impossible. Why? Because all the amenities that we're in work for, social security, you know, our employment status, what's going to happen to those things? So that's the biggest the factor for all of us, knowing that we're going to have to divorce our colonized life, yeah, into finding our place in society on who we truly are as Kanaka Maoli. A lot of people scared to give those kind of things up. My dad came to me and tell, told me, boy, why you like wake up the dead? Let them rest. Forget about all those kinds of things. It's not about that for me. It's about finding closure on how we connected, how we related. And I guarantee you, everybody here, we all related by blood. We all related by blood because if you go into the genealogy, when you start getting into genealogy, you start finding out that this one powerful wahine, her name was Kalani Kalele Evi. She had four husbands, yeah? One of them was Lono Ikaha Upu. Kaula Hea was the second. Kawawa Amahi was the third. And Keawe was another husband. So this Wahini Kalani Kaulele Evi from Moko Keawe had four husbands. 
those husbands go from the Kamehameha dynasty all the way down to on the Kawawa side was the warriors that defended the fields on all the different islands that are in this Pai Aina. So that's how we relate it, unilaterally, direct. Some people say Lonoi Kahaupu and Kaula here because that's from the Kahikili line. If you're pursuing that, then that's why we get a lot of people out there saying that, you know, their kupuna was um, so and so king, and now they're pursuing that effort to find uh, where they fit in, into society. That, that's why now, today, we get all these kings and queens being born. It's the makaena na. You guys have absolute title. And if you can tie to those titles, yeah, and come out victorious in the end, those titles answer for itself. Those are sovereign under another existing government prior to this one. Anybody seen my last testimony at the county, in front of the county council? How many of you did? I kind of went rip them, yeah? Next testifier, Keiomoku Kapu, to be followed by Susan Varsinus. <coughs> Mr. Kapu will be testifying on Bill 67. Morning, council members. Kemoku Kapu from Lahaina. Um, you know, it's not the first time we went through this. <coughs> Back, I think, before any of you sat on the commission, maybe a few of you were here. In the same area was a 201G fast track project at a larger scale. Yeah, that took us two years in the Land Use Commission to show that these lands, yeah, cannot accommodate those kinds of fast tracking, especially to the point where these guys would be exempt from doing an environmental impact statement. I'm really appalled that this council can't even see right in front of them on how this one project will be on rubber stamp for all these other 201 inch projects that are pending now in the planning department. After this one, you get two more. You get one up Haiku, you got Olawalu, you got Kahoma. Now all of a sudden there's this new acronym now, 201H. Not once, 20 years I've been in front of this council. Not once everybody, anybody ever addressed the concerns of the Kanaka that live in that valley. How many years we've been coming in front of you guys and telling you guys, this whole development is overstressed. They don't even know where the water coming from. They can't even guarantee that. So if they're going to guarantee something, they're going to say, oh, we're just going to drill another well so we're not going to impact the river of Kaula. But no matter what, it impacts. Same aquifer, same repercussions. How many times we got to come in front of this council for tell you guys, yeah, to look in front of you. Look what they're doing to us. This is a historic district. Everybody knows Lina as being the capital of the kingdom. But they only look at it in a grid, grid line kind of area from uh, Shaw Street to Prison Street, you have historic district one. The real Makamai of that whole historic district, which was the capital of the kingdom, is in that valley. We still get Kuliana landowners in there. They were there prior to this new regime, and from the time of the crown, those lands are governed by Kuliana still today. We count. We are the majority there. When we come in front of you and we're telling you that this development is no good, it's no good, it's overstressed. That river, yeah, you know, I hear somebody talking about the kind, a lot of the Lao Poco people live there. How many times their water blows? How many times all these things happen? I get the call two days before Dave Binami has to go up and clean that intake. I know what it takes to clean that intake. There's no guarantees over here. Anything in that system, there is no guarantee. So I'm here for Delta Council. Hey, you know what? Two on G, two on H, all it is is a fast track. They're trying to get around the rightful way of doing things, the porno way of doing things, and we the ones getting impacted, the Kulianas. We getting impacted more than everybody else. So, good luck. 
Whatever happens from this, it's not over. They may be lost and filed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kapu. Members, any need Chair. for clarification? Mr. Kapu. Hold on. I have okay, a question. Ms. Cochran. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Mr. Kapu, in reference to the water, um, it's been shared and you know, the, um, the, the lawsuit that had, you had been through in the court system. I'm just wondering how that is going to or is to affect this and their water um, you know, usage and, or even <laughs> receiving it at all. Or I, I'm just trying to tie that in. Well, there, there isn't a final settlement that came from the court yet. Once I wait, once I get those papers of the, the total outcome from the jury trial, the next step for me is to figure out whether or not I'm going to leave that pipe on that property. So that pipe runs the whole operation of that whole development. That pipe goes down to the hydro plant that operates the hydro plant that operates the wells in that area. And all I ask for them is to do the right thing and listen to what the Kulianas have to say. All these developments, these fast tracking, got to stop. And I'm not trying to be one bad guy saying that, hey, you know what? Yeah, I pull in that pipe out. But that's my right. I fought 17 years in court to get where I am today. My family suffer every day. And it's not just me, or my own over here too. Nobody listens to us. So if I wanted to shut down this development, I'd pull that pipe right off of that property. Whatever repercussions gonna happen after that. And that's what you guys need to realize. There isn't just one party over here. This isn't just developers that all of a sudden they get the golden coin that they can promise everybody true affordable homes. What about us? What about our life, our legacy? What would happen to us? The Kulianas that depend on those resources over there every day. So I'm telling you, I'm on the verge of doing something that I don't want to do is pull that pipe out. That pipe is very valuable to them. And if I do that, then everybody in Lao Nio Poco is going to suffer too. But it's not my responsibility. It's your responsibility, and that's their responsibility. If the lawsuit's going to come flying okay. after whatever I do, it's going to be on them. Okay. And it's going to be on you, all of you. That's okay. what I get pending in the courts. That is what is lawful. That is my right. That is my Ohana's right. So, sorry. No, th but thank you for not your for answer. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Kapu. Ms. Cravello. Uh, um, Aloha, and thank you for being here. So, hearing you, am I to understand that um, as a result of your um, quiet uh, uh, title um, decision that has come through. The impact will be the, I guess, the Lani Opuko Irrigation Company's um, ability to continue using the um, the water line. They would need to seek easement rights from you. Is that my understanding? It, it could boil down to that unless we come to the table and come to some kind of negotiation for me to allow them to leave that pipe on that land. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Is there time? Good morning, Mr. Kapu. So, would you say that it's, it would be this council's, uh, would be premature to allow uh, other developments and subdivisions until your uh, position is clear because a possibility there'll be no water for that entire valley? Yes. Very, very possible. Um, like I said before, I'm waiting to negotiate. My attorneys have been getting in touch with them. They're like little babies with big toys. They're not like shitty toys that all of a sudden now they don't want to come to the table and talk. So I'm hoping that the judge sanctioned them to come to the table to come to some kind of agreement. Yeah, What's going to happen with that system? And I have that very right. Okay to ask because of the years. This property was stolen from 1898. And I proved that. 
title isn't guaranteed. All title isn't guaranteed. And whatever goes with that title, the amenities of the land that was awarded to those Kulianas, that's a big question too. The years Pioneer Mill has abused our people has come to an end. And I'm gonna make sure that we get fair due process. Our families of that valley will get due process. Okay. You Mr. need to help us. Mr. Kapu, I've, I've allowed your job. you to range far afield from the from what's on the agenda. Okay, Ma Maharlo, I, I hope you guys understand this. It's really passionate to me, and well, I've been we, in, we in this front of this council that. many times, so I'm not trying to be offensive or anything. I'm not trying to threaten anybody. I feel now more responsible of the people that bought homes over there. Now I stuck with that decision, too. Because whatever I make, it's going to jeopardize all of their lives too. And I don't want to be the person to make that decision. But they give me no choice. Nobody gives me any choice but to go the route that I'm going. <coughs> if I'm going to file one lawsuit, I'm going to file one big lawsuit. And it may come on down this government as well. For the lack of your fiduciary duties to do things that is right, that is fair. So mahalo, 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 mahalo for allowing me to speak. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Kapu. Please uh, hold the clapping, please. But literally, I was telling them, because Ellie Cochran was the one who asked me that question, saying that you need to kind of tell us, uh, your, law, your land case, what does it do? You need to explain to me. Because of your, your land case, how does it impact the development of Lao Poco? So literally, I told them that, you know, right now, once we get the final ruling from the Second Circuit Court from the judge, once I get the papers, I go to OHA, and I went show some, some pilike on OHA saying that OHA and the Native Legal, Legal Corporation never did anything to our people or anything for our people. So I pushing OHA, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, up against the wall, and Maui, you know, because of the process that went happened 10 years ago, Kuliana lands are exempt at zero. You guys know that, eh? Zero exemption in Maui County. So I pushed Kamanawa Crab up against the wall and I told him, brother, I've been fight 17 years on this case. I come into you guys with my land title. You guys gonna exempt me. He emailed me back, says, as soon as the ruling come in, bro, you get the exemption, you deserve it. What that does is ties me not to this government, but it ties me to the existing government, which means now, yeah? I'm not part of the process. The so-called fictitious government regime that they put in these kinds of things together. I answered to the Land Commission Award that was awarded for my kupuna down to me. So in the county, I told them that that pipe running across my land, I'm going to take them out. Or what does the pipe have to do with the whole development? That's where they get the surface water for the development and the water from the pipe goes through the hydro plant, which operates all their wells that they drilled all over in Lao Poco. I take that pipe out, I shut down that whole place. And I reminded them of this, saying that, you know what, I come in front of this council 20 years ago, we always, the Kulianas of that valley has always been slapped in the face that you guys thought that, oh, we're just such a little mouse in the valley, we don't need to worry about them. Business can continue. But they're always copying deals with the other foreign entities that all of a sudden when purchased properties were on warranty title deed. So now I get the county kind of up against the wall. I get the land company up against the wall. And all I'm asking for is due process because we've been neglected. But for it to come down to this far, to have the county and the state agencies see the reality of the truth of what's happening yeah, they, talk, they, they tell Lahaina is the capital of the kingdom. What capital of the kingdom? The only thing they're doing down in town is producing more pili care for the tourism industries. They gridline this town saying, this is historic district one, this is historic district two, this is historic district three. Historic district one is all the sites that you can, you can still find in the town is pre-contact. Then you get the whaling era, which is post-contact. Then you get the sugarcane era, which is historic district three. 
So our whole lives have been dictated and determined by grids, yeah? A map of a picture of a portion of the Earth's surface taken from above and drawn to scale kind of thing, yeah? And that's how they determine what is important, what is not so important, but then they forget about the Hiapo living in a valley above the town that is the true Makamai of a historic district. The families that still live in that valley that was given properties from the time of the crown. We still there. And I know that every valley, every valley in here get Kuliana. And if they stuck all of a sudden up against the wall, like in the 30s or the 40s, well, in the 30s and back, that all of a sudden your land commission award went turned into a TMK? You guys need to fix that. Take that property off of that TMK map so you guys never going to be taxed again. And we get solutions for those things. So my message why I came today, and I'm a hollow kavevehi, Uncle Bobby, for allowing me to speak on behalf of this subject because I know that the only way this thing can continue, we all got to go home. And it's a great possibility. We just got to be consistent. We just got to stay the course. And we got to turn the tide already. What we're doing in Lahaina is such a small scale, but now the tide is turning, yeah? Now all of a sudden, right after that meeting, they said, oh, back to committee. They never like vote on them, but they, you know, one thing about government, they look at feasibilities, they look at, uh, you know, they rather deal with the conglomerate because they get investments there. And all of a sudden, when they do on subdivision, you see these guys moving in on grading and grubbing permit because they're trying to spend as much money they can so the county cannot deny them the development because they spent X amount of millions of dollars doing the infrastructure already. So a lot of us, we give up on that. Once it's like going in and it's like grading and grabbing, we said, you know, it's done already. We're finished. We're not finished. We're not done because those land commission awards need to answer. You need to wake them up. You need to bring them together. You need to bring it back. And I get pala pala. And it's a redemption that I can give every person over here, yeah, if you really want to make that extra effort to go that extra mile. The only consistency in this is just be true to, truthful to yourself. So you got to do. If had Pilikera, what happened in the past? Hey, that was the past. Leave that in the past. But you need to go forward. You are heirs of Kohawai Pai Aina. You still heirs of Kohawai Pai Aina. And that's what La Hoi Hoi Ea is all about. Finding where you fit. We cannot just say or believe that this is La Hoi Hoi Ea. We got to apply it. And I never thought that 17 years I'll be in front of you today saying that we, there is succession. That we cannot give up. If you go the political route, hey, that's fine. I've been stuck in the political route. I'd rather go in the mountain, stay in the mountain and plant taro. I like talking to Halwa. But then at the same time, I got to divorce all that. Let my kids malama. Now my sons, they think they're the Konohiki of that valley. Because daddy too busy stuck in the politics. But we got to figure out where our place in society is going to be in order for us to live free. It's going into that valley and doing whatever we need to do to survive. And I guess that's a message I came today. La Hoi Hoi Ea is about survival. Yeah, it's not identifying who you are as Kanaka. But it's about identifying who you were and applying those things. And I know with such a small group, and I told a lot of our ohana, and that's why. Uh, now we kick us from Olawalu. They finalized the papers. We made their signs. They're going home. We get the higher family. I just post their, their signs up on a gate. If you look at the kind of public media, Facebook, oh, that's a wonderful tool. Because when we put these notices up there, yeah, 
ua koe ke kuliana o na kanaka. That's an old term, man. It's called absolute, right? Before, we used to have pioneer mill signs. If you notice the color of the sign, it's exactly the same color as pioneer mill signs. So we're telling everybody, this is kuleana access only. And we're putting the signs all up. And mahalo to John Kinimaka. Because he's the guy that get the vision for put the words together for us and put the Land Commission Award, Royal Patents. We're posting these signs all over the place as a reminder to the so-called, uh, what, what I, I prefer to call them the, the dragon with seven heads. Because Pioneer Mill was the big five gave birth to the dragon with seven heads. And that's all these conglomerates, these new guys that came into our town. And now they're claiming to, to be the new like governor, mayors, and, and everything. They're getting involved in our canoe associations. They're getting involved in everything that we do. Our kanaka, and they're literally going inside and they're taking over these little associations. Because they get the money, so these canoe associations and... Uh, Lahaina Restoration Foundation, Lahaina Town Action Committee, they're all getting involved because they get the money to help out these non-profits survive, yeah? I don't like their money. I don't like being affiliated to all these new guys that they get this promissory that we need money and they can just write one check for $20,000 and hand them to you. You tied to that pilikia. I don't tie myself to those pilikias. Because I know the long run precaution, yeah, I'm just as guilty. Keanu Sai was over here last week and he said that the tribunal is coming, right? And the tribunal is going to determine how much of us, yeah, today, the regular Kanaka have been obedient. And if not, then, well, we may as well consider ourselves treasonous to the crown, too. I mean, we've got to think about those things, yeah? Is there a tribunal coming? The federal government is already here trying to manipulate us already. But theoretically, people, if you look at it, and they're saying whether or not Hawaiians going to qualify to be indigenous people, we don't qualify. We don't qualify. That's the way I see it. Why? Because we got a birth certificate that was created by them. We get an identification card. Our whole language was manipulated. Yeah. Our whole way of life. Now we adopted a new way of living. So don't accept too much when the federal government say that, oh, we're going to make you Native Indians and you're going to be under the Indian affairs and we're going to give you all this money for you to survive. That's a trick that. Only to find out that in the end that we all don't qualify as indigenous people because we've been genocided. That's the process of the federal government. So you get genocide bucking on and talking about the Larson case in 1999. That Larson actually won his case because the government or the crown wasn't there to protect his interests. That's a reality. So if the tribunal comes trying to figure out on whether or not all of us was complacent in our society, that we adopted the rules of the crown to govern our lives today, then maybe we get chance. Nonprofit organizations, that's all treasonous kinds of things. So I started to think about that, you know, when Keanu started talking, saying that we're going to be tried. Our own people are going to be tried. And in the bottom line of all that, Whatever the conclusion gonna be, all of us might be guilty of war crimes. That's the reality of what he is talking about. Walter is taking the message out there and reminding people, yeah, where you stand in this society today, and what is the, how would you say, it? maybe what is the, the, the solution to everything? My solution is. All you guys got to do is find your place, find where your kubuna was, and go home. It's that simple. So if you guys want to, and you guys have the time to, I can come to your neighborhood. I'm going to Kauai in uh, September to help out brother them over there in Wainiha. Everybody who starting to see the vision that we all got to go home. So I'm, I, I'm not saying that I have the exact tools that are going to help people find air, yeah, that are going to help people find where their place is from. 
But what I have is a start, and hope it hopefully it becomes a disease. A great disease where we get people pushing up against the system. When when you see uh, like you know all these things happening now, you get Mauna Kea, you get Haleakala. We had that great effort that was done in Eel Valley once that all of a sudden the thing went buckle loose. And everybody think that Eel Valley got ravaged and devastated. I live in the opposite side, Kaula. Yeah, that got just as ravaged and devastated too. So this um, valley over here, Maikala Hikiakalakau, from the rising you have Eel. On the setting, you have Mauna Kawahine. That's where we live on the other side. So the precautions that happen over here are going to happen on the other side. So the great effort that was done by the younger generation by going over there and just saying, hey, we're not going to wait for the state. We're going to divert the water ourselves. Well, they did that. Look at today. It's back to the same already. All those efforts that was done to being kiais and all that, where does it get us? So we got to talk about the bigger picture. Yeah? Too many firecrackers and explosions going off all over the place, and it's so stagnated, it doesn't bring all these issues together. Mauna Kea, they're holding them down, all because of the master permit. These guys never do what they're supposed to do. Back from 1932, I think the master permit was given. Now, to the settlement agreement, they got to reapply the applications. That's simple. Okay, you screwed up back then, you screwed up today, now just reapply the application then, we'll see where we're going from here. All that kind of bandage there, that's bandage. It doesn't address the issue. Haleakala, I see them over Facebook, all over Facebook. Now everybody, we got a meeting tomorrow. What gonna happen over there? How many more of our younger generations gonna have to get arrested in order to figure out, is this accountable to everything else that we're doing? Or we're just making noises. We're making noise over here. We're making noise over there. Hey, it's good to rise the volume. But where does it get us in the end? So if everybody, like, focus on one good KIE fight, look at where you are. Look at who your kupunas are. If those lands are undeveloped, and a lot of families, they give up when they say, oh, that place is all developed already. That's all right. Find out where you fit in there. Put your papers together. Even though if it's developed, at least you know. That's your, tubo, that's your kubuna's land. If all of a sudden this thing collapsed today, yeah, everything collapsed today, and some of us, a small portion of us, is hoping that this whole system going to collapse. If it does collapse, where are we going from here? What are we going to do? If the boats stop coming, what going to happen? That's the reality we got to think about. We're worrying about all these other kinds of things because the state has failed their fiduciary duties to protect our resources. So if the state is failing, then I think we need to rise up and start fixing those little problems and not even going to the state and asking permission. In fact, I think the state need help. And I think they would be open to us guys going up there and doing what we need to do. But it's the guys in legislation telling them, oh, it's not a part of the bylaws. You got to tell them, go over there and knock it off. We just got to do it. Like up in our valley, during divert, I, during divert, I put the water back inside. I end up in court. So all we did was, and this is another plan too, when... About the dam, about a mile up, we dig one trench and we went over alongside the dam. And nobody even knew that the water was going in another direction, yeah? So we diverted it again. But this time I went to State Historic Preservation to try to get one historic number for that freshly made Hawaii. And they gave us a number. So they're not going to stop the water flow that had been diverted by the dam because we already went set precedents in those areas. There's things that you can do. To set an area to be iconic. Another thing we started to do was, you know what, if state historic preservation is mandated to protect all these kinds of things, then we started building kuahus all over the place. You go Kamehameha Iki Park, again on kuahu, right in the middle of the park. 
We built one traditional hale, pakala, kameme iti. So the county came to me because I was running the hui at that time, and the county said, wow, who be, built this? He said, well, there's a bunch of people from all over the state of Hawaii. They brought pohaku from the island. We're in Paris, Kuahu. Now we use this as hookupu. So the county says, yeah, but I think that'll come down. So I tell them, oh, well, all I can say is we get the prayer for put them up, but we don't want to pray for put them down. So the kuahu is still there today. Nobody like Tachuk. In Kaula Valley. I needed one ma pele, yeah? Because it's all about, you know, the state always say, when they bring these cultural consultants and they come to you because they go on development happening and the first thing they ask you is, is any traditional cultural practices are being done in the area? And a lot of the people say, oh, what is that? Oh, I don't know. So that kind of relies heavily on us to literally say, this whole island is a traditional practice for all of us, no matter where you go. But if you don't fill that gap to tell these so-called culture consultants that these things are previously done in the area, they're going to write them off on the EIS saying, ah, the Hawaiians don't come here anymore, which allows them to do whatever they need to do in those areas. So there's tools by using the traditions of the past, applying it today. So if we need to, whose property it is? Who's, whose property is this under? Another county. Oh. La hoi hoi This is good. We need to build on Kuahu right over here. We need to celebrate the moment. Yeah? Pound about 50 pounds, put them on top of the Kuahu, consecrate the baga. Yeah? So it's always forever going to be there. That's a cultural traditional practice protected under the Hawaii State Constitution, Article 12, Section 7. So if you know how to use the rules that is in our legislation for our benefit, we do that all the time. And there's nothing they can do about it. And just so happen we get one representative from SHPD over here. Right, Chris? <laughs> Some people say, you know what? You know, like the, the prayers and the rituals and all those kinds of things, yeah, that needs to be applied to these kind of iconic things to bring it alive. That's a cultural, traditional practice. This right here, getting so much people together with all these papakui eyes is a cultural, traditional practice. So I say, we get some pohaku over there, we'll go bring them over here, we'll go build one big giant maapele. These are the kind of things we got to think about because when you, even though if you res, it was re resurrected 100 years ago or if it was resurrected today, there's no difference. You apply the prayers, you apply the appropriate things, you consecrate it the way you feel it needs to be consecrated with the witness of everybody here. This becomes protected under the Hawaii Constitution, Article 12, Section 7. It works, people. We just got to apply those values into today by using that traditional generational knowledge and bringing it to the forefront. If we fail to do that, then people are only going to recognize this as just being another day where a bunch of Kanakas getting together and pounding poi. That's all it's ever going to be. We need to bring the level up a little bit more higher that everything that we do that is cultural is the traditional practice. And we got to live that code. It's a code of conduct. We got to apply those things, those values, not only by giving it to our younger generation, but our elder generation as well. We need to mark these moments. Everything that we do in our valleys, everything that we do. Uncle Bobby, taking this side over here. I hope you get all those king lands to start doing what we need to do to feed our nation. But, Build the kuahu. You build the kuahu on all these different areas. If they gave you say, maybe 20 something acres, you put one kuahu on each corner of the acre and you put your boundaries up. Once you get the boundaries set, hey, when they tell you, oh, sorry, your lease is up, oh, wow. I don't want to pray for take down the kuahus. Whatever you guys gonna do with the area, good luck, but don't touch the kuahu.
What's he going to come to you if he does? <laughs> those things are, you can apply those values because we get the manna to determine our faith. We get the message that we need to send out to people that we still hear. We still apply, applying those traditional cultural values that count. And if we don't apply those things, then you know what? Everything is a resource for somebody else. I mean, look at brother. Mahalo for cutting law come on for stepping up to the plate. Now we get a lawsuit against the state of Hawaii for all that illegal mining that they've been doing. You know, him and uh, Auntie Clara Pana. Years, I've been in the barrel counter and I said, Auntie, the only way you're going to get anywhere, sue me, because I'm the chair. So when I go in front of the judge and they swear me in, they promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yeah, I do. So what's the problem? This whole system is dysfunctional. They're right. It's that simple. We got to stop leaving the illusion saying that, you know what, we just, we just here to get along. Stop getting along already. We need to find where all our problems are. We need to focus on those problems, bring those problems to one big giant problem where we get many people looking at one issue instead of being segmented and everybody taking on all these different separate firecrackers all over the place in the state of Hawaii. We've got to figure out how we can draw all those together. Build one giant kuahu, yeah? Bring all the pilike on that kuahu and we tell the people of the nation, now is the time. Now we know what direction we're going. Now we know what we need to do. As a combined effort throughout Kohawai Pai Aina, this is what we need to focus on. And we need to focus on our lands. Those lands still belong to us. Yeah? These lands still belong to us. So, um, Thursday nights, Naikane Maui Cultural Center in Lahaina. If anybody can make the time, come to the center. I'll give you the redemption form to start it off. Yeah? Come and learn where the power is. And I'm open every day, weekdays, 9 to 5. Come check me out. I'll show you the most simplest process. We got all the pala pala inside there. We get the Mahele book. We get all the native testimonies. We even get titles and deeds. We get probates. The probates is the most important. If, the, if you guys get probates and the probates still open, that's why these guys use, using your probates, yeah, as collateral so they can go in the bank and make loans. So they're using your kupuna, yeah, for money. These things are real. It's happening. So what you guys need to do is look for your probates, close that probate. So nobody can no longer use those profits of your kubuna as collateral in the bank. Forget all those million dollars, yeah, as a loan from the banks. Those kind of things. It's a reality. So, mahalo no kako, everybody. Sorry, but sometimes I go off all different kind of directions. But I, I mahalo, mahalo you all. Mahalo you all. Very much, and uh, if everybody like the kind kind of cook a little bit on the side, I, I was hoping to bring a lot of the pala pala t today, but man, it's been rough these past weeks. So, if you guys do have the time, come see me, I'll fill your void. So, mahalo no, mahalo no kako. Yeah, I the first time I met Keo Moku I was in the offices of the Friends of Moku Ula. And I was wondering, wow, this Hawaiian, he looked real angry. And when I heard his story, I realized why. And um, yeah, that's true. Uh, I've seen his struggles. I've, I've seen him do hakas in front of bulldozers with his boys. And um, that is why, only now I realize why we did a haulilani over in, in um, Wailea to do that cultural practice. We did a haulilani because my, my father-in-law has kuleana in that area. And my son called out his name at that haulilani ceremony. So, Malo, so... If you like, get back to your boards and mahalo everybody for coming out.